Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's lecture on Richard de Souza's Apocalypse Soon. So this is actually a poem that one of you guys have requested on one of my videos on Richard de Souza, where I go through uh, his poems, Animal Crackers and Birds, Beasts and Relatives. So I know that uh, some of you guys have posted some requests on my previous lectures, asking for analysis of certain poems. So if I can, I'll try to uh, incorporate them and make videos on them as well, but it will take some time. Okay, so if I go through my um, objective in this lecture, I basically want to go through the, this poem. I want to engage in an analysis of this poem. But before we do that, we will be primarily looking at the significance of the title, the context to this poem. And then we will be reading out lines and we will be engaging in an analysis of this poem. So first of all, let's go to the significance of the title, Apocalypse Soon. So this is the definition of apocalypse, which I came across through Merriam-Webster Dictionary. So if you go through several dictionary definitions, you will come across diverse definitions, but it's more or less the same. So I'm going to keep the first definition aside. The first definition, as you can see, it is mostly based on a religious framework, and we will be getting to that later. But what about the second meaning? It is it, it refers to the fact that apocalypse mm -hmm. is something viewed as a prophetic revelation. So that is very true because this is a poem which comes across as a prophetic account of the ethnic violence, which is going to take a very drastic turn. And we will be going to that later. And another meaning is that apocalypse is a large disastrous fire and it is a great disaster, which also makes sense because it's talking about the violence which is erupting, or the flood of enmity, thicker than blood, uh, about uh, gunmetal, about frenzies, bottlenecks, broken, jagged ends, vitals which harm the vitals of the nation. So it goes through like a lot of very devastating, violent, um, hatred, enmity, those kinds of meanings are uh, there are throughout the entire poem. So definitely it makes sense for us to read it through these definitions. But the first definition is important as well. And why is that? So the first definition says that an apocalypse is um, one of the Jewish and Christian writings marked by pseudonymity, symbolic imagery, and the expectation of an imminent cosmic cataclysm in which God destroys the ruling powers of evil and races righteous to life. Uh, so this meaning is important because you see that throughout this poem, there are some religious visual images which are incorporated. But I primarily look at this definition in relation to the poem uh, because of this uh, line which comes towards, uh, which comes towards the final part in this poem. So let me open that first. When you go to the poem and you go towards the end of the poem, um, here he says, has the fifth horseman come again to raise his banner and wreak havoc on the land? So this reference to fifth horseman is important here. And why is that? And we will be trying to do a reading of this in reference to the first definition. So what are these horsemen? As you can see on the slide, so let me put this on full screen mode. The reference to the four horsemen, it's not the five horsemen. So the reference to fifth horseman in the poem is important. Uh, so if you look this up online, there are four horsemen of the apocalypse according to Christianity. Four horsemen who, according to the book of Revelation, appear with the opening of the first four of the seven seals that bring forth the catacly cataclysm of the apocalypse. Um, so here I have taken an image from the 1887 painting by, by on four horsemen of the apocalypse. So from the left to right, you see death, famine, war, and conquest. And conquest can sometimes scholars refer to conquest uh, and interpret that it symbolizes Christ or Antichrist. But that is something else. We won't be doing too much of a reading to it. But 
what is important that in this particular poem, it says that has the fifth horseman come again to raise his banner and wreak havoc on the land? So through that, we can read that perhaps De Soisa is talking about the possibility of the fifth horseman coming again to raise his banner and wreak havoc against the notion. So in the author's note given in this book, so this is a, a selection of modern Sri Lankan poetry in English edited by the scholar, the eminent scholar, Raji, uh, Raji Vijay Singha. So in that he provides us with the author's note where we give, where we have some meanings to certain words that De Soisa has used. So fifth horseman, it, it says, see Tarsi Vitachi's emergency 58. He suggests the fifth horseman of the apocalypse is racial strife. So therefore, if the four horsemen, according uh, to Christianity, are death, famine, war, and conquest, according to Tarsi, perhaps the fifth horseman is racial strife. So the fact that De Soisa is referring to the possibility of a fifth horseman coming again and raising his banner to wreak havoc across, across the island, perhaps the fifth horseman in the context of this poem can be a reference to ethnic strife, which we see, which uh, Richard De Soisa is, crit is critiquing and which Richard De Soisa is commenting on in this particular poem. Right, so it can be the possibility of an apocalypse. It can be the possibility of a, a cataclysm, uh, of a cataclysm which can bring forth an apocalypse. It can be. I, I will repeat it again. It can be a reference to a possible uh, cataclysm which can bring forth an apocalypse, which can wreak havoc throughout the entire nation of Sri Lanka. And what is this apocalypse? Apocalypse brought by the fifth horseman, it can be the ethnic strife. Reading through that lens of uh, Tazi, who sees this as the racial strife. So I hope that is uh, clear to you guys. And that is the reason I wanted to engage in a reading of the significance of the title. From there, we will move on to the context to this poem. So if you look at the context to this poem. This is a poem written by Richard Soisa, and I won't be going through an extensive biography of the writer in this lecture, but as you all know, Richard Soisa was abducted and killed by the government forces just a few weeks short of his 32nd birthday. So his life came to a very tragic end uh, when he was merely 31 years old. If you look at his background, you understand that he comes from a socially and economically affluent family. And he was interestingly also coming from a family of mixed ethnicity as well. Throughout his lifetime, he was a very well-known theatrical personality, teacher, actor, journalist, uh, broadcaster, human rights activist. Uh, so you understand that he was an individual who wore many hats during his lifetime. He was a man with such a multifaceted nature. And the poem's title is Apocalypse Soon. Now we have already talked about the meaning of Apocalypse and how we can read it in line with this poem. The title is Apocalypse Soon. So what does soon mean? Soon means that it is impending. So that gives us an idea that this danger is lurking, that this danger is impending. It's going to take place soon. So the apocalypse is going to take place soon and wreak havoc across the nation. And that is basically what we have in, in the content of this poem as well. So in terms of reading further into the context to this poem, we understand that Richard Isoisa writes about the ethnic violence which started to arise in Sri Lanka in 1981, which burst into a very devastating aftermath in 1983. Now, when we talk about the ethnic strife in Sri Lanka, we understand that the violent persecution erupted in the country in several years across several spans of years. And we see this happening back in 1956, 1958, 1977. 
and the 1983 anti-Tamil uh, pogroms, uh, and also because of the burning of the Jaffna Public Library back in 1981. So this particular poem was written or published in August 1981. So this is referred to in the author's note given in a selection of modern Sri Lankan poetry in Sri Lanka edited by the very eminent scholar Rajiva Vijay Sinha. And this poem is also included in a collection of poems by Richard de Soisa, which is uh, the Other Eden, the Collected Poems of Richard de Souza, which was published in 1990. So you should also know that this uh, collection was published after Richard's death, and it was published by the English Association of Sri Lanka. Now let's go back to the uh, to in terms of reading this context to this poem as a prophetic account. So we describe this poem as a prophetic revelation, as a prophetic account. Why do we do that? We do that because this poem written in 1981 comes across as a prophetic account or revelation of the drastic turn that such ethnic violence would lead to, and which did as well, because uh, re history revealed this to us as with what happened in July 1983. And it is through that context that we approach the reading of this particular poem. And this is also the place I'm going to end this first session on Richard de Souza's Apocalypse soon. And in the second session, the second lecture on Richard de Souza's Apocalypse soon, we will be going through uh, a thorough reading of this poem. So thank you very much for listening and I will end the lecture here. I'll meet you again with the next lecture on Apocalypse soon.